Don't we all just love fucking brain rot chat? Don't we all love brain rot? What's the biggest brain rot you guys have seen recently? <laughs> I can tell you. I can tell you. <laughs> My stream. <laughs> My stream a couple of days ago. <laughs> <laughs> brain rot content is literally making the next generation look oh like God, something skibbity. out of idiocracy. Dumb dopamine destroying, attention span numbing clips, GTA subway surfers clips with random family guy moments and flashy <laughs> edits. All of this garbage is becoming a cancer on society. But what are the effects this content is having on Generation Alpha, who are currently being born and raised with this stuff in the most formative what? developing years? What? Bro, bro had two! Bro was dual wielding! Bro was dual wielding! Who are currently being born and raised with Bro's dual wielding! What? This stuff in the most formative developing years. What will society look like in 20 years time when Generation Alpha grows oh, up with this God. content leaving a foundational Humanity impact on their brains? Cooked. Well in this video we're going to be going over the true damage brain rot content is having on Generation Z and Generation Alpha. And so to begin we need to understand its impact from the beginning. Brain rot comes in different ways, but the common factor is that we are trading our normal real life practices with what we find on the internet. We seem oblivious that we are replacing our basic life decisions with quick, easy solutions without checking if it's from a sound source. Now, of course, not everything on the internet is accurate, and based on each case, it could do more harm than good. And this is the start of brain rot. It replaces essential needs. Before we know it, we're scrolling through whichever platform taking in so much trivial information that ultimately is useless to us. But today in 2024, brain rot has taken a whole new level, and the real uh, victims of this are kids. As bro, the biggest brain rot I think that I could think of is probably like Skibbity Toilet Man. Oh my god, Skibbity Toilet Ohio Rizzler Man. Yet yeah, Ohio Rizzler, I, I, I don't fucking know man, holy shit. And like, I think one of you guys said that they heard like, one of their, I don't know, cousins or something. Or nephews, sorry. One of their nephews say, what the skibbity, like, unironically. Like, ow. Uh, oh, God. We are so As we all know, most parents today are tired from working. They come home late, tired and exhausted, and want to slump on the sofa. And yet, if they have a crying toddler, the simple solution is to put on something entertaining for their the toddler. The simple solution! So that mom and dad can a simple solution? Let me, let me tell you, chat. DON'T HAVE A CHILD! Just don't have a fucking child, it's not that- yeah, Apparently it is that hard for some people. Relax. And so they'll put on a show like Coco Melon. Now parents aren't oh. necessarily trained to take a yeah, closer Coco look Melon. at what they're watching. Parents Pure just want to do rot. the chores, get the dishes done, and it's taken for granted that Coco Melon is safe. After all, they've got tens don't of millions of subscribers. Child. Every other kid watches this stuff. And whilst we're not saying Coco Melon in and of itself is a terrible thing, it's the way it's designed and how it's the tip of a rabbit hole that really starts to do damage on children's minds. You see, the show, like many YouTube channels, is designed to keep your child's attention which means there are constant picture changes every couple of seconds. Yeah, well, what is your toddler nothing. like? Well, nothing but nursery rhymes nothing. and a YouTube addiction. But at such a young age, this constant picture. Bro, bring back Dora the Explorer, man. Like, what the hell is this? Bro, Blue's Clues. Bring, bring all of that back. You know what? I'll just, I'll just put that on for my children in the future, man. Mona the Vampire. Yes. Oh my God, bro! I remember I've won an, I've won like a, a like a magazine giveaway of like this vampire teeth because I answered a mo Mona the Vampire <laughs> question correctly. Ah, I was so happy. Need to change with flashy edits, constant zooms, crazy over the top voices is more than what a baby can usually sleep. process. Yes. So the brain has to do everything it can to deal with all of this stimulation. Instead of learning through touch, feel, experiences, and even through the reassuring sound of mum's voice, it's replaced with a screen showing bright colors and setting up the mind for the new normal. Overstimulation. Yikes. And this is from the very beginning of their lives. This content is so addictive, and the beginning of a nasty rabbit hole that parents are completely oblivious to. 
And this overstimulation can't be overstated for little Yay. kids. There's already been a bunch of controversy with Mr. Beast himself, as this overstimulation oh, no. has the same effect oh, no. as street drugs for children. The brain is thrown into the deep water of what it is processing, and it's exhilarating and exciting, but to what end? And you see, this is just the start. As we all know, and as we've mentioned on this YouTube channel before, there is a new phenomenon known as the iPad kids, where the go-to oh, for parents God. nowadays yeah. is to give their kid an iPad to keep them entertained because now the child has been taught that this I hate to say this, but my sister did this to her children. My sister gave her children iPads. We're so cooked, chat. We are so cooked, chat. We are so cooked. My sister's younger than me, by the way. We're so cooked. We're so cooked. This is how entertainment should be. Take it away from them and all hell breaks loose because the brain is bored and has no sense of what normal life should actually be like. Lots of children are no longer able to be in real reality, present, and grounded in nature. They have to have overstimulation, constant color changes. <laughs> Bro, what? Wait! Yo! Look at that minion! They have to have overstimulation, constant color Bro, look at him go! This really shows in schools like so bad. Oh! Ah, uh, why have a freaking child if you don't want to take care of your child? Color changes, bright flashing signals, and so it's almost as a <laughs> dead <laughs> chat. It's the circle of the arrow. Constant color changes, bright flash. <laughs> They're the circle of the arrow. I'm telling you, it works. That's why I use them on the thumbnails. It works! Signals. And so it's almost a survival mechanism to have their iPad now. It's a full-on hardwired addiction to their brain. With a constant urgency to be entertained. Look at Einstein's. Yeah! Bro! Bring back the good old kid shows where kid shows actually try to teach children and something. Going outside, playing in parks, having picnics, and having social interactions are important parts of growing up and learning. They are the foundational yeah. years that set your moral code and your beliefs about the world and other humans. Getting your hands dirty in the mud and being exposed to germs Eat and viruses that blow up the immune system is all part of how your body learns to fight or manage environments. But now this is all starting to change. Where kids need their stimulation from their iPad, the flashy games, the subway surfers, the Mr. Beast videos, <laughs> to feel satisfied. Oh. And this is just numbing their mind as the overstimulation takes its toll. You see, developing your imagination is vital to problem solving, and these tools are being replaced with entertainment that numbs this. But the problem only gets so much worse later down the line, as kids are being deprived of more social interaction, community, Shut being down, outside, reading books. The it starts to really take a toll on their mental development. And one of the questions is, who are these people raising the next generation of society? Who are the moral teachers guiding our children to the future? Well, it's probably some of the worst people in society teaching your child how to think. You see, YouTube clips advertised as oh, educational no. for kids have been exposed since Elsagate. Now, Elsagate no! is a name given to clips on YouTube that are presented as child friendly but are very inappropriate for kids. It's an entire topic on its own. We've actually done a whole is video Elsa on Gate this. Still the going fact on? remains that while parents are allowing kids to use uh, iPads, is it still they are going never on? ensured a safe environment and could be exposed to very unsavory behaviors through what they see as just a cartoon. And so, as kids are being taught, by these predators, these creeps, some of the worst people in society, while having their brain completely rewired, when they go into the education system, it's becoming a complete disaster. Teachers worldwide are battling to Can't hold wait. their students' attention, and they have taken to TikTok and other platforms to discuss this growing problem. Kids in oh. I, I... Bro, best way to start teaching the children something? Just put a giant fucking screen with fucking subway sofa next to your face. <laughs> Maybe they will stop paying attention. <laughs> Most of stuff they are exposed to is crazy. Yeah. Eighth grade cannot spell a list of words. A simple task like this is a sign of extreme ADHD, which is hardly the child's fault. The constant social media intake, bright colors, and addiction to their iPad has not only begun their own brain rot, yeah, it's but the set them up fault. for failure. They have the belief that they know everything because they take in so much from the content they want. I had three seven-year-old who had seen Squid Game. What? What the fuck? That's so messed up.
That is so messed up. Bruh. Watch, but in more ways than we can imagine, using social media as their teacher. A teacher who, a few decades ago, would be shunned by society. And so the more these kids are supposedly learning the show, from great. the iPads, the less they great. actually know. Already, we're living in a world of constant distractions all around us. But can you imagine how dangerous this could be in situations like driving oh, on the no. road and the collisions? I mean... They surely wouldn't pass the driver's uh, test, right? They surely wouldn't pass the test, right? The accidents that result from this. Just recently, a truck driver in Tennessee working for a concrete mix company smashed into the car of a single mother of four. As the driver attempted to turn left out of a subdivision, distracted, he crashed into her head on, resulting in around oh. $69,000 in medical expenses, and the pre-trial offer was only $70,000. So what do you even do in these sorts of situations? Traditional personal injury law firms often involve burdensome paperwork, time-consuming processes, and costly appointments, making it difficult for victims to get the justice they deserve. And that's why I want to tell you about Morgan & Morgan. After I have fallen for the ad. <laughs> I have fallen for the ad. After the incident, Morgan and Morgan worked with the mother of four to reach a record-breaking $30 million verdict after smooth highlighting the defendant's transition. misconduct Good and job. severity of the injuries to the jury. Yeah, when you're seriously hurt, your injury man. could be worth millions. Smooth Morgan and Morgan AF. don't settle for lowball offers. They achieved significant verdicts in the past couple of months for victims involved in life-altering car crashes. $12 million in Florida, 34 times the highest insurance offer. $26 million Jesus. in Philadelphia. 40 times the highest insurance offer and their Jeez. fee is absolutely free unless you win and the best part working with them can all be done from your phone without the need to visit any offices Yay! if you ever get seriously injured like your outside. case could be worth millions and you're only a few clicks away from potentially changing your life it's so easy you can start your claim now with morgan and morgan at www.forthepeople.com forward slash moon there you go Link americans in the below. there you go but then you may be thinking, how is it possible to learn so much and know so little? Well, it's a paradox in and of itself, but ultimately what they are learning has no use or effect on their lives. And if it does, it's to their detriment. Knowledge without- Nowadays, all the children want to be is the next biggest influencer. When do you ever hear a child anymore say they want to be, I don't fucking know, a vet, an astronaut, anything? Like, have actually aspiring dreams? What's the last time you heard a kid say that? Nope. I wanna be a YouTuber! I wanna be a YouTuber! I wanna be an influencer! I'm TikTok famous! I'm Br Instagram f famous! Ugh. Last year I heard someone so passionate about being a pilot and I really think one day he will- Hey, that's nice! That's nice application is pretty useless as the focus has now been removed from what is important like life skills and shifted to internet fluff and the result is we've now got eight-year-olds trying to fit into whatever tiktok trend is viral with no <sighs> substance to reality made up by oh god i hope they're not gonna try to do no poop july <laughs> oh no complete weirdos online so what happens when gener what do you want to be when you grow up kitsu i want to be a vtuber Generation now for them become teenagers who can not only focus long enough to spell a word, but can't change a tire or even cook. It's the here and now mentality that. Does a baby have lipstick on? Does a baby have makeup on? Is long enough to spell a word, but can't change a tire or even cook. It's the here and now. Chat. Look at the baby on the right! What the fuck? Both of them? The one on the left isn't as noticeable. But the one on the right, holy Here and now shit! Mentality, that is so, so, so bad for their the skin! The boundaries of simple patience and discipline. If you want a movie, download it. Need food, order it. You feel bad? I hate this. My diet has mostly been consistent of ordering food. Listen, I'm very tired, okay?
Being a content creator is tiring, okay? <laughs> uh, maybe I should get a maid. Maybe maid Exigon was. Maybe, maybe, maybe we should get Exigon a maid outfit. Maybe you guys were all onto something. You know, maybe I should get a maid. <laughs> Look at your iPad. <laughs> Everything is set up now for immediate results, but the real world and achieving your destiny isn't like that at all. You have to learn patience, discipline, and embrace the negative parts of life. Without that foundation, your life will never have true meaning or substance. In our new world though, reward is expected and not earned, as the brain is now being rewired to get the next dopamine fix to learn anything of value, rather than focusing on the path to getting that reward. This is why playgrounds are emptying out, all hallmarks of imagination, so and sad. play are being destructed. We are currently watching the youngest generation be desensitized and numbed, and this is really horrific, as it means their dopamine is so fried, they need to constantly up the level to achieve the same You think children are unironically watching those, um... Shit, what are they called? Mukbang. Those mukbang video videos? You think children are unironically watching mukbang? Oh my god. That's a scary thought. sense of fulfillment and as we're starting to see this is making content online weirder and weirder and influences are becoming more and more deranged which is a terrifying fact when statistically 66 percent of generation alpha literally kids are using ipads and tablets on a regular basis it's been a build-up of platforms and what they can offer from facebook instagram and now tiktok as the platform has mainstreamed our addiction to scrolling reels, we can sit for hours on end, whether it be YouTube shorts, Instagram reels, TikTok clips, one reel to the next, and it's almost like we go Just, on autopilot. Almost everybody is addicted more. to it. And so Just one more. Just one more video. Just one more scroll. Just one more. Just one more. Green stick, thanks for the follow. Just one more some way. It's impossible not to be. And when we do this, we're never really engaging in any kind of useful activity. And if you ask anyone what they just watched, there is so much intake of information they that won't we even don't know. Really take in. Most people they, couldn't they tell don't you even they real or what they just viewed hours nope. before. TikTok they presents short reels, so we don't think of it as time consuming. We deceive ourselves into thinking we will only spend a few minutes watching and scrolling. However, these reels are designed to keep you engaged and scrolling to the next one and the next one. And before mm. you know it, it's 2am and your brain is so stimulated by what you just watched oh, and the blue boy. lights radiating from your screen that you can't Yay! switch off and go to sleep. Or you just sleep. fall asleep because watching reels is making you so exhausted. But on the other side of this pipeline are people making enormous profits from this. As more I've fallen down this rabbit hole once. As soon as I started catching myself, um, that I was just like, I wouldn't even say addicted, but I was like, there, uh, there was a time period in my life, probably like a year ago, maybe two ago, where I would just scroll through YouTube uh, shorts nonstop to like distract me from things. And as soon as I notice that I'm just on there nonstop, I refused opening shorts. I refused opening shorts. I stopped consuming any short for, uh, term content. I stopped looking at it because I would just doom scroll. Now, the only times I ever watch shorts is if they are on the recommended side. Like, if it's, like, a recommended short on the main page or, like, on the right side of the video, you know? But I... Once I'm on a short, I try not to doom scroll Because, goddamn, it really fucked up my sleeping schedule at the time. Really, really badly. I would be up so fucking late, just in bed, like... Just scrolling, scrolling... Literal brain rot. More people are starting to... But, to be fair... I feel like I watched the entirety of Young Sheldon because of it. <laughs> I feel like I watched the entirety of Young Sheldon because of it. <laughs> <laughs> Realize that if they can add a Subway Surfers clip to some random podcast, they can make bank from Brain Rot clips. And if it's not garbage Brain Rot Family Guy clips mixed in with GTA Racing, it's some evil Yay! challenge like the Blackout Challenge that literally took a few kids' lives. Wait, what? I mean, children are now getting. Wait, what? What the hell is the Blackout Challenge? Deadly social media Blackout Challenge resurfaces nine children. What the hell is the Blackout Challenge? 
Uh, chat, you have fried my chat. Chat, you literally fried my chat. I, I don't even see what you guys are saying anymore. Good job, chat. Proud of you. Did she say yay to that? That was an hour. It was a sarcastic yay! <laughs> Uh What the okay, what the hell is that challenge? The blackout challenge. I found out about it the other day, okay, what is it? Hold your breath till you pass out. Oh 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 Jesus! What the fuck? What? I remember when, like, the worst challenges existing was the ice bucket challenge. What? Evil challenge like the blackout challenge that literally took a few kids' lives. I mean, children are now getting tattoos done to keep up with the trends that are forgotten in just a week. And because everybody wants to jump in on this, everyone thinks this is the new way to get fame, clout, and money, and it's so easy to do that everybody will do anything to be at the front of people's attention for just 15 seconds. And there is no limit to what people will do to get this attention. Most of the time, completely compromising basic human standards and morals, or even normal stuff like videoing themselves helping a homeless person, there's never a thought to how that homeless person might feel being filmed. It's always about the appearances and nothing of substance. Something that's very new in 2024 that we haven't seen for most of human history. But there does come a time in everyone's what life when fuck? we have to finally go out in the real world, find jobs and start our lives independently. This is what's right? happening to Generation right? Z and will soon right? happen to Generation Alpha. But this is where brain rock content to... gets really scary. I... I'll have to leave my house soon and get a job, right? Dyson cringe. Dyson cringe. <laughs> Dyson cringe. I'm sorry, Chet. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. As you see, the more brain rock content you consume, the more handicapped you become to ever actually go out there and make it for yourself. Increasingly, Generation Z and Generation Alpha will have no idea how to be social and how to deal with jobs that expect them to work, as we are literally being rewired through these short clips, the rewards aren't earned. Increasingly, more people can't hold down a job because they shut down at the first hard task given to them. Problem solving is becoming rarer and rarer. Patience, I mean, discipline, fair, and drive. Just to be fair, 9 to 5 work environment was literally proven to be not a good thing was literally proving to be inhumane you know just to be fair nine to five jobs are freaking terrible this is true, that does. It's being increasingly numbed. If a job doesn't suit people's ideas of what work should be, they quit and move on. And it's an endless cycle. I mean, to be fair. To, another. to be fair, if the job is horrible, it's. I think it's a good thing that people s uh, will not take their boss's uh, shit. Like, there's two sides to this, man. Like, there definitely is two sides to this. Because a lot of. Work jobs are still in a really bad and toxic uh, state. Constantly chasing the dragon of the next big thing, but never being able to actually grow any roots anywhere. And as people's lives become increasingly alienated and lonely, Generation Z and Generation Alpha continually turn to the online world as a form of escape, resorting to- Couldn't be me. Couldn't be me trying to make a living from home. On the internet. Couldn't be me. Couldn't be me. What they've grown up with on their phones, laptops, or iPads to scroll and find online solutions to earn money without ever actually doing anything. I think the best thing would be to start with a job. No. Yeah, absolutely. No. She needs a job. No! 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 No!
and just laughing. Thinking that splicing GTA clips with random cuts of the Joe Rogan podcast is actually a business model. Besides the odd fluke, it's a complete pipe dream that has no actual basis in reality. As this becomes more pervasive, it leaves most young adults not equipped to ever build a life for themselves. As people are placing their importance in a fake world that doesn't really exist of She just throw a banana into a pot with water and run away from it? What? Did you just... Huh? To ever build a life for themselves. As people are placing their importance in a fake... <laughs> ...world that doesn't really exist of online what? entertainment and random short days. Oh, Snake! Are you so such a good boy? I'm falling for it. God damn it. I mean heads, failing to learn but all the real life boy. skills, morals, and standards that come with the very attributes that are being killed off by these algorithms. Feeding a continual loop of if you don't like it, you dump it and move on. You can say whatever you want and have no consequences. You can dress like you want and wear the best fashion design clothing. But all of this is eventually working against you as there are real life consequences to this. Through spending so much time- At one point we're gonna come to the point where uh, things you do on the internet will be you will be held responsible for the things you do on the internet and i mean at one point as i said this before and i've gotten so much hate for it but at one point with how close our lives are connected to the internet at one point we are going to be held responsible for shit we do on the internet and it, i think at one point with how humanity is evolving at one point you should be held accountable. And I'll say it again. I've gotten hate for this, but I'll say it again. The internet is so integrated in our lives right now. It's going to get much, 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 much voice in the future. And the problem for me didn't do shit in the internet except some minor shit. Yeah. Like, as long as you don't do jack shit on the internet, that's a bad. You know? You mean even if it harms your right to privacy? No. Not if it harms your right to privacy. Not if you, like, talk to someone in DMs. Not like DMs kind of thing, you know? Not if you, like, text someone and make a joke about things. But if you say something publicly on Twitter, that's inflammatory and meant to be seen as a threat at one point. You know? Wait for the Neuralink memes to become real. <laughs> Who gets to determine what is right and wrong though? That's the question. Where's the line drawn? Um, we got lost for that. And we may disagree with some laws. Sure. Absolutely agree. But the law isn't perfect, but it's a start. Common sense ain't too common no more. That is also true. Mass bricks, uh, break sticks. Why is it not bread sticks? Thanks for the follow. It just there. It's a risk with regulation comes a slippery slope on it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like I'm not like oh everything you say. In DMs with your friends in a voice chat, you should be held accountable for that. No, hell no. Hell no. But, like, to a degree, you shouldn't just be able to say on Twitter that you are going to, like, yeah, I, I, I can't say it. It's very TOS. Like, that you are going to do some really bad things, you know? About the other show I was thinking about, Go On The Go, what was that about? The show promotes movement in a wide variety of ways without also knowing, also being overstimulating. Oh boy. Our group chat gets leaked, memes are about to be real. We feel a lot of the time if something you say do is extreme or bad enough, you are going to eventually face the 
music for it in real life. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. The only people that are hyper against this are people that use a fucking uh, mask of personality on the internet that are scared to say the things they are actually thinking in real life. That's the people that are against it. I'm scrolling. People are physically changing through brain rods. People are developing neck problems from constantly looking down at their phone screens. Other people's skulls are being dented by constantly wearing headphones in front of their laptops. Wait. Hold on. Wait! Rewind! Their phone screens. Other people's skulls are being dented by constantly wearing headphones in front of their laptops. Guess we all cooked. Huh. Guess we all cooked. Guess we all, guess we all cooked. <laughs> Instead of getting exercise and sunlight, people are getting more fat, more depressed, and more sick. Psychologically, we are growing numb to the outside world. Our dopamine fried, resulting in a lack of interest in doing something that might require patience or anything that opposes what the online brain rock content offers, further pushing us into the world of idiocracy. Even being an introvert is on the rise. Not because we're introverted, humans are one of the most social creatures out there, but because we're now being pushed into staying at home and not going out. Statistically, only 20% of people are actually introverts. However, the trend of being an introvert through generation really? gaps is- that low? There's no way it's that low. Right? Like, I want to see, I feel like I, I've seen so many introverts speak about shit, but all the extra words would be outside. It's that low. It actually is. Remarkable. 46% of Generation Z identifies introverts, a massive jump from only 19% of millennials. We're robbing wow. ourselves of real life experiences and trade them in for small moments of entertainment and brain rot. But the worst and most real effect of brain rot is evident in relationships. You see, partners' um, interests begin to fade oh as they spend no. more time on their phones than in actual relationships. Relationships with parents are more strained as Generation oh, Z and Gen Alpha are no. almost using another language with the slang that they use. Even when the kids try to explain what the slang means, it still leaves their Parents confused. <laughs> Try fucking explaining what the skibbity, man. Try explaining what the skibbity. Go on. I'll wait. Because there's no way it has any fucking meaning whatsoever. What the skibbity? Delete skibbity toilet. Delete skibbity toilet. I'm worried about the degradation of their child's communication abilities. Slang like skibbity means nothing. It's just a term Literally. to say simply. Originally coming from a YouTube series called Skibbity Toilets. Now slang has always been a thing, but now we're literally seeing toddlers turning around to their parents and saying Sigma. Or ah, not the toddlers! No! What the Sigma? I'm too old for that, sadly. <laughs> I needed to explain Gen Alpha slang to my grandparents because my younger siblings. I never wanted to punt them more, the siblings. Oh. Instead of saying something's gross or bad, literal children are now saying Ohio. Ohio. The foundation of their language is being built by these random words, becoming part of their normal social language. Now, slang is by far the telltale sign of each generation gap. The difference is that for the most part, older slang could be explained better, whereas internet slang can't really be explained in full unless you have a basic yeah. knowledge of the internet, and in particular, yeah. TikTok clips. Even the older generation's frustrated <sighs> that children are literally learning a completely demented form of English. But overall, it's really oh just a sign goodness. of the breakdown of actual social communications within children. Since everything is now digital, family photos are being replaced with selfies that are Bro, I bet she's like 24, but she looks so old. Bro, she looks so old, but I bet she's like super young. So filtered that it's hard to know what age you really are at the time. We remove the wrinkles and the poses are so forced. Everyone's lusting after- My little brother was saying what the Sigma to my parents had to explain that. Yikes. People that don't really exist on Instagram. In 20 years, the photos you show your children will not be authentic or real. The people you love, the people you want to be with, all completely manufactured and fake. Brain rot is something that should bother everybody. If this generation cannot form a sense of discipline now and not know authentically what is real, how do yeah, we teach we the fun. next generation what we ourselves do not know? Yeah, we're fucked. 
the ripple effect of that alone could be devastating. How many more childhoods have to be lost in the fog of watching endless reels before people realize the true damage a brain wrought? Now, of course, there is a flip side to reels and social media. You can learn skills or how to fix something. There is value in seeing things from different points of view, and social media can be great to explore your creativity and artistic attributes. But there's a careful yes. line between this and brain rot. Brain rot is yes. more common than one thinks because there is no control. There is an underlying addiction that isn't being addressed, and like any addiction, it leads to bad consequences. If you go looking for a solution online, get the solution you want. How do you use a screwdriver? <laughs> don't get sucked into scrolling, or you watch a specific video that you were actually looking for, or even at the least just give yourself a time limit, it isn't that bad. And social media can be a great thing, you can learn so much from it. But in doing so, principles like discipline are more important than ever, as it keeps you focused on the real important things. The old ways of learning and living life worked well without the internet, and people were happier because of it. Once people start realizing this and the true dangers of brain rot, only then can we reverse some of the consequences happening. This is Bitcoin. Jesus. Brain rot content. Uh, so yeah, in short, TLDR, it's Jova. TLDR, it's Jova, chat. It's Jova. TLDR, it's Jova as hell.